my congratulations to Malta and the organising group of CLGF and the Malta Arts Council on their splendid hosting of this conference. And I'm glad to see that many of you have made it uh, in this morning and not been tempted away by the delights of this fabulous island. Microsoft has been a long-term supporter and partner of the Commonwealth Local Forum and I'm delighted to be here again in my third consecutive biannual conference to continue that fruitful association. So thank you for the opportunity to address you today on digital transformation delivering the SDGs. If you had a chance to read the background paper when you were on the way here, Dr. Allen of USAID set up this session quite well when talking about how decentralization of functions, reducing fiscal transfers and increasing demand for services require new ways of thinking, new operating models and smarter ways of thinking through a delivery to deliver on the capacity that's needed for local development for the SDG um, uh, commitments. I'm going to talk specifically about how ICT is an enabler through innovation and colleagues who will speak after me will flesh out in many cases real world examples of how they're doing this. Let me start by just talking very briefly about what government is about. Government is about making themselves more accessible, more efficient, more transparent to the people and the other constituents that they serve. Digital is helping with that, but with that comes some challenges in and of themselves. But if we just talk about the external environment and the internal environment, externally, you know, resource shortages, you know, competition between cities, states and regions, demographic shifts, um, in the internal side, of course, legislation, policy, and of course, fiscal realities. Um, but there is good reason to be optimistic because the ICT shift to services for things like mobile citizens, social engagement, wider and lower cost cloud computing, utility capacity, data and analytics will all help governments realize their potential. And I've spoken before, in fact, in Botswana at the 2015 conference about this shift that government needs to make to the data culture. If we think about what's happening with the industry today, um, then there are a number of trends that represent what's important uh, now and in the coming decade. Most people in this room will have at least one mobile device, hopefully switched to silent at the moment, but probably carries two, plus a laptop or a tablet. Most people, if you take a poll, have got on average 2.5 devices, um, and in many cases, uh, people have got more devices than they've got indoor toilets. The proliferation of these new device types along with the connectivity of the cloud is making us more mobile and changing the way that we all live, work and play. And with this always on connection, we can think about how new innovative services can be delivered with instant scalability and attractive economics. Analytics has been important for a number of years, as I mentioned, but the explosion in connected devices, the Internet of Things and the new applications are generating huge amount and exponential growth in the data. This gives us a better opportunity to get good insights from all that data. I spoke uh, actually in Uganda in 2013 about something I termed at the time the new normal. If you were there, you may remember that I talked about how we've been living beyond our means. The launch of the SDGs in 2015 showed us just how much we need to adjust, not only to survive, but to thrive in this new normal. And again, Dr. Allam's background paper talked about how local governments need to do more with less to get, build these new efficiencies, to reach out to communities, to target services, access new sources of revenue. And ICT has the potential to improve the provision of those services and the infrastructure which underpins how local economies and the support for local governments uh, for those services to businesses and citizens operate. And ICT can provide new mechanisms to engage citizens, including getting better feedback, crowdsourced data, and a way to reach out where appropriate to marginalize and hard to reach sections of the population. But why is ICT driven innovation in particular so important? Well, I believe it's the only way to get the next iteration on more with less. This is new with less. Just doing more of what we've always tried to do and screwing down hard on the efficiencies is not going to give us the kinds of gains that we are going to need to see in the new world. So I would say that we have to do new with less. And new means thinking differently and using IT as a catalyst for that. ICT is a catalyst for that. And I'll return at the end to just give you some ideas of things to think about. The important takeaway, I think, is the shift in about how government needs to operate at all levels. And this is really to shift from what I would call retuning your antennae from a broadcast mode to a receive mode. So governments really need to be much more responsive. Are you asking yourselves these questions internally in your agency, in your municipality, in your council, in your city administration? 
Are you really thinking through how we're inviting citizens in to participate, how effective we are in measuring the impact that we're having with what we're doing? How are we keeping citizens engaged with us for life, if you will, thinking much more about that as a, as a customer relationship? Governments everywhere should be asking themselves that because the voice of the citizen, and particularly through the World We Want efforts that coordinated the production of the new SDGs, showed us why it's important to hear the voice of our citizens and our other constituents, which allows me to actually to get into SDGs. Microsoft has previously worked with the UN on data visualizations for the original Millennium Development Goals, which was 21 targets and 60 indicators across 190 countries. And following the call for data revolution for sustainable development by UN Secretary General in 2014 and the publication of a, a report called A World That Counts, if you're familiar with that, this new data culture that I talked about has really been trying to work out how can we now think about 17 goals and 169 indicators. We've been active in many ways, supporting the World Bank, the UN Statistical Agency, and many of the national statistical institutions in accelerating the agreement of how SDG data standards and platforms to drive the benchmarking and progress reporting will operate. And as a member of JESSE, the Global E-Sustainability Initiative, we contributed to this report summary that you can see here, the iChart, uh, which was launched just in June of last year, 2016. This report's findings illustrate how ICT can shape and transform a broad range of economic and social opportunities highlights those significant positive progress towards the attainment of the SDGs, just a couple. Improving people's lives. 1.6 billion people are estimated to be able to uh, benefit from more accessible, affordable, and better quality medical uh, services through e-health care. And digital solutions for education could improve access for a further 450 million people in the planet. On protecting the environment, digital solutions can enable greenhouse gas, gas emission reduction and drive market transformation for renewables and cut carbon emissions by an estimated 20% by 2030. The most important takeaway from this slide, though, is to just look at the colors in each of the dials. Where you can see green, this is where in 2016 it was estimated that we were on track or had already met one or more of the key indicators in each of the goals, the green. There's a lot of red. This is where we have a way to go to hit the target, but this is where we can at least measure how far short we fall today. What's most alarming, thirdly, is the amount of gray. Gray is where we do not currently have the data to even benchmark where we are now, let alone measure our progress. And you'll see that I've highlighted number 11. Of course, SDG 11, Inclusive, Safe, Resilient, Sustainable Cities and Human Developments, which is the linchpin of the localizing process, is one of the areas where we have the least data today. And we're very focused on moving the dial on that. Um, it's also important to know that while SDG 11 is the one that obviously targets cities, urban, peri-urban, uh, and so on, and local regional governments, 103 of the 169 KPIs, 61%, are considered relevant to cities or have a component that will need action at the local level. So it's not just SDG 11. And 60 of the 107 targets explicitly refer to at least one other goal than the one to which they belong. And 19 of those targets are linked to at least three or more other goals. This multiple linkage indicates the need for greater levels of integration and policy coherence. So how do we measure this? By leveraging the work I mentioned that we've already done and are doing with the UN, the World Bank, and national statistical agencies, but localizing for the relevant priorities and building the tools to track the progress. Microsoft has a long track record of helping ministries, agencies, city administrations, and others across the public sector to build the tools and the processes that will deliver those insights in an engaging visual and real-time manner through, for example, these visual KPI dashboards. I don't have the time in this session to dive deeply into this, but we have many types of these solutions being built by our partners on the platform. And we're going to highlight some of these in the workshop which follows on after the break on digital cities. I've also brought with me a copy of the handbook which you were all given in the packs when you registered. Uh, within this, we've been proud, to, uh, we're a sponsor of the handbook as well. We've been proud to take the opportunity to highlight 15 case studies um, that are relevant in a city context from Commonwealth countries. I'm hoping one of your countries is represented in here, and if it's not, please come to our stand and let us know your success stories. We'd love to include those in, in further editions. Um, we talk here about performance management. We talk about governance. We talk about uh, accountability. 
We talk about the uh, criticality for the urban life of cities is around mobility and transportation. We talk about how economic opportunity is generated through access to IT and particularly to IT-related skills which are increasingly in demand in the knowledge economy. How we go about developing smart cities or indeed even smart nations as well as improving value delivery and upgrading the infrastructure that's necessary to support that. So please do pick up a copy of the handbook and have a browse through and come by the booth. And also, we had an opportunity to put a small gallery on at the registration area, which shows some other aspects of the work that we're doing through technology, um, including solar energy, malaria reduction, uh, ar uh, agriculture. So plenty of examples of the work um, that we're involved with and working with CLGF on. I want to just return in my last few minutes to talk a little bit about innovation, which I mentioned earlier. Um, I was impressed by Mayor Errol Badley's comments, uh, which I probably would like to borrow for future presentations, when he talked about the role of cities as creators and conveners of opportunity in the new knowledge economy. And I think that really encapsulates quite well what many of us now need to think about when we're thinking about how our organizations um, are going to support uh, the driving of economic growth, the creation of economic opportunity, generating attractiveness for our locality, making us more competitive. And so to do new with less and drive innovation, it's important about bringing through those improvements in the quality and efficiency of public services and responding to these uh, social and economic conditions that I mentioned. In the UK, my home country, there was a recent report called The Rise of Urban Tech. This was a study that talked about how gov technology innovation is a catalyst for startups, new opportunities for employment, and new business models, not just in the public sector, but across the wider economy. And there are a number of challenges running now in the West Midlands and other locales in the United Kingdom to encourage this kind of cultural shift. So with the tightening public finances and the pressure on resources and the increases in the need to seize on the innovations that will lead to these greater efficiencies and effectiveness, we're focusing really on innovation here for two key reasons. First, find these new ways to meet the rapidly changing needs of citizens, residents, and businesses, streamlining your operations whilst managing within those financial constraints. And second, as I've said, to increase the economic and social opportunities by supporting the ambition of those individuals and local businesses to grow successfully and to generate positive economic and social impact. Most local governments find it hard to make progress, but from a series of Microsoft-led innovation fo focus workshops, which we initially piloted in four Australian cities about 18 months ago and have continued in other places since, there are five categories of action that organizations th should look to implement. First, create a safe environment for experimentation. The government really needs to work in new ways in the digital area, so we need to create an innovation group that's going to allow for experimentation. And cities that have successfully moved forward in this have done that. They've created an innovation area which involves risk and potential failure, but managing it and managing the impacts and managing the learning cycles that come with that. I mentioned already, and others, others will probably speak about this, about community engagement, reimagining community engagement um, in a way that will um, allow uh, that engagement to be continuous. I think that's important, not just one time. Obviously, digital tools are going to make that um, more possible to reach more people in a richer and deeper way, but do be careful not to leave those behind that choose either to not use those channels, don't have the competency or access to use those new digital channels. Partner with the key actors, the businesses, academia, the nonprofits, the other government agencies in developing the strategy. I think it's important to understand the importance of space and place and designate the sub-areas as innovation districts. This focus tends to bring in a force multiplier of location of similar-minded skills, experience, and aspiration. Review the strengths of what your locale does to attract investors, to attract innovators, and to attract talent. Use technology to unleash data and improve um, uh, data and improve your services. It's a powerful resource for expanding uh, the services and improving your operations. Figure out what you already have, what you don't have, and what you need. Consider how it can be used and shared, because obviously we need to consider privacy, particularly for citizens, and how computing, new cloud computing technologies can help you um, to advance. Of course, overall, you have to have a long-term vision and a supportive culture. The learning from these workshops in Australia and elsewhere is that innovation starts at the top with a clear vision. It starts normally with the mayor, the governor, the city leader. The cultural change within government sets the tone for the place 
and the pace for the place at which these changes can be brought forward. And as Helen Clark said yesterday, although she likes the idea of money, she made it number five because it's not always all about the money, progress can be made by changing the narratives rather than just spending money. So in closing, think about the role technology can play as an integral part of implementing your local policy and not just as an afterthought. It's new with less and innovation for sustainable growth and driving towards the SDGs. Thank you. <laughs>